Hello friends, today we will be discussing how I managed to lose the service brake, which is the normal brake you use as activated by the brake pedal, and the emergency brake, which is also called the parking brake at the same time. If you are unfamiliar with how the drum brakes on this vehicle work, then I recommend you watch my explanation video, which I will link in the description below. Before we could talk about the cause of failure, I would like to provide you all with some context. Firstly, the video you're currently watching is of me replacing the brake shoes on my Mirage. This is of the right rear corner of the vehicle. Additionally, the Mirage shown in the video is my only vehicle. It is my only way of getting around. I need it to commute to work, to buy groceries, that sort of thing. And finally, I'd like to mention that this video, like all other videos on my channel, is being filmed in my apartment complex underground parking lot. Car maintenance is a violation of my lease terms. So I film all these videos at night. The video you're currently watching was filmed at around 3 in the morning. While me installing this hardware may look easy in the video in person, it was rather scary to me as I was pulling with a lot of force and I was scared that the car may slip off the jack stands and crush my feet. Now that I've completed installing the hardware, I tried to put the drum back on. I noticed that the drum does not fit, so I go and check the e-brake. The e-brake is down. I try hitting the drum. I try spinning the drum on. Nothing's working. Then I notice that the shoes have a little bit of side-to-side -side motion, so I begin to think that the issue may be that the auto adjuster is not fully retracted and may have extended during installation. So then I tried to use the hole in the backing plate to release the auto adjuster, but my screwdriver is too long and it doesn't appear to, that I'm getting the right angle. But I'm not even completely sure how the mechanism works at this point in time. This is one of the reasons I released the explanation video on how the auto adjuster works. Then I decided I would try to remove and reinstall the auto adjuster without taking off the main springs to save time. So you can see here I got the auto adjuster out. I ensure that it's in the retracted position. Then I try to use the screwdriver to pry against the brake cylinder and put the auto adjuster back into the correct place. And right at this very second, you can see I've cut my ring finger open. This is in real time. This has not been sped up. As you can see here, I've given myself a minor cut on my ring finger on my left hand. I'm left-handed. At this point in time, I kind of decide that I wanted to give up and try again another time, possibly with a new set of shoes or have my shoes replaced by a professional at a shop. So there are a couple of major problems with the idea of giving up at this point. The first is that I do not want to leave the vehicle in jack stands. This is my only vehicle. Without it, I cannot drive to a parts store to pick up parts or get to work or what have you. So I'd have to order parts online and wait days, if not weeks, for them to arrive. The second is that there's no way for me to get the wheel back onto the car as the wheel mounts the drum and the drum does not fit at the moment. So I'd have to leave this on stands, which may mean that my landlord may catch me, may get screwed in that end. And the third issue is that without a wheel on the car, Having the vehicle towed to a shop is practically impossible as the underground garage I'm in does not have the clearance for a flatbed tow truck. The only option will be to have the vehicle dragged on the backing plate likely causing a lot of expensive damage to the vehicle. So the course of action I decided to take was to try and reassemble the old shoes back into the car and put it all back together that way and then drive the car to a shop. At some point while putting this back together my minor cut opens up quite a bit more likely as I'm using my hand to flex and hold tools and try and pull these springs on. Right here you'll see me incorrectly install this large spring that holds the two shoes together. In the left side I put it through the wrong hole. In a few seconds I will decide to omit this spring for the sake of time as I only intend on driving a few miles down the street.
As you watch me torque down the axle nuts, think about what you just saw. Did you spot the mistake I made? I know I didn't. Immediately after reassembly, both the service brake and the parking brake worked as expected. I had no reason to expect something would fail. The mistake I made is right here. I did not install this small spring that connects the trailing shoe to the auto adjuster. In this reference photo you can see the spring I forgot to install would connect the trailing shoes web to the auto adjuster. Naturally without it you would expect that the auto adjuster would just fall out of place, but that is not what happened. If we turn our attention to the parking lever as shown here, we can see that it has this cutout that holds the auto adjuster in place. Because of this, the brake system continued to work as normal until at some points the auto adjuster must have fallen out of place, causing failure of both the service brake and the e-brake, which I will explain shortly. The red arrow in this photo points to the parking brake cable. It is contained within a spring. Whenever the driver pulls up on the parking brake lever, the cable moves in the direction shown by this arrow. The parking lever is shown outlined in red here. This parking lever then pushes against the auto adjuster here. At the same time, due to this pivot that connects it to the trailing shoe, which is the left shoe, it pushes the left shoe outward against the drum and then transmits force through the auto adjuster, pushing the right shoe outward against the drum. So now let's think about what would occur if we didn't have an auto adjuster, say it had fallen out of place like it did with me. So now when the parking brake is applied, the cable pulls that way. Since there is no auto adjuster, the parking lever instead pushes against the brake cylinder which causes a downward force on the shoe. The absence of the auto adjuster meant that the parking lever no longer functioned as there is nothing for the lever to pivot off of to move the trailing shoe against the drum and without the auto adjuster there is nothing to move the leading shoe against the drum as well. Here are the factory service manual instructions for adjusting the parking brake lever's stroke. Please keep in mind that the right rear brake is the only one I attempted to service. So if we take a look at my equalizer here, we can see that when I pull up the parking brake lever, the lever goes much higher and the threaded rod biases to the right, indicating that all force is being sent to the left rear wheel. In a real emergency, if I had pulled on this lever, the left rear wheel would have locked up, putting the car in a spin. Furthermore, if this failure had occurred to both rear jumps simultaneously, then we would be left with no e-brake at all. At the same time as my e-brake handle suddenly went sky high when I pulled it, my service brake, whenever I pushed the pedal, it felt very spongy. The pedal felt like it would travel halfway down before the braking actually started. I think this was because of the loss of one of my two hydraulic systems. I hypothesized that this downward force caused the shoe to slide down, which resulted in the shoe's web no longer being in contact with the piston. Without the shoe contacting the piston, it would be free to overextend and cause a loss of brake fluid, causing a complete loss of one of the two hydraulic systems in the vehicle. The main issue with my hypothesis is that these shoes have a nib, which I've drawn a red box around here. This nib is supposed to sit within a channel in the backing plate. The center of these nibs is designed to prevent the vertical motion that I believe occurred from happening. I think the issue may be that these nips may be too short to perform their intended function on a set of worn shoes and warm drum. If we look at this diagram from the factory service manual of the vehicle's braking system, we can see that there are two hydraulic systems, one indicated in black and one indicated in white. The right rear wheel that we worked on in this video is wheel number one in this system. 
and we can see that that is also connected to the front left wheel and the back left wheel also connects to the front right wheel therefore a loss of both rear hydraulic systems would result in a complete loss of all vehicle hydraulic systems here's a photo of the aftermath i guess i wore splints for 10 days continuously and i had the option of receiving stitches if i wanted thank you so much for watching i'd like to end off with some closing remarks um, before starting on this adventure, I read online that people have had issues with shoes not fitting. Um, because of my experience as shown in this video, and because my aftermarket shoes squeak at random, especially when turning, I recommend getting OEM shoes. Uh, in the video, I mentioned that simultaneous failure is a possibility, because with new shoes, the auto adjuster would not have fallen out of place until it was time for it to extend which may occur at the same time with a set of new shoes on both sides. Uh, additionally, the shop I went to had the same issue as me. The first set of shoes they installed did not fit, but due to their advanced logistics network, they were able to have a new set of shoes from a different supplier delivered the same day. Finally, I did not attempt to loosen the parking brake lever. I do understand that it may have caused these shoes to not fit, therefore I do not place any blame on the manufacturer of the shoes. Below I will link some form posts of people who have had similar issues installing shoes. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to leave any questions, comments, or concerns down below.